Good afternoon, this is Eric Bach with Navigation Electronics and I'm going to do just a quick overview of Esri's beta version of Collector for High Accuracy. So we're going to start out by going to settings and I'm going to turn on my Bluetooth. Outside I've got my R2 running. You can see here I have uh, the R1 which is the IAP and then the R2. Uh, I've already paired them up, I just have to connect it. So once this connects, we'll just go back to my main screen. I'm going to open the latest version of Trimble's GNSS status app. We're going to select the R2 from the list. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to go into real time. And since this is a centimeter R2, I want to use corrections from, in this case, in Louisiana, I'm going to be using LSU's GolfNet uh, VRS. And you can see here I have my port and all that stuff pre-configured. I'm going to go back to home, and you can see I'm tracking 14 satellites, 0.6 centimeters is my estimated accuracy. So I'm connected, I'm getting satellites, I'm getting corrections. So I'm going to pop out of this, and we're going to go into Collector. And what, what we're going to do here is in the top right corner, this little square with the arrow, I'm going to click on that, and we're going to start off, we'll just go, here's my organization. You see a little bit about NEI. We're going to go back in here. We're going to go to settings. And we'll start at the top. We've got collection settings. Um, we have these type collection style, collect a single feature at a time, collect similar features repeatedly, uh, filter related types. Uh, you got this thing at the bottom here, preferred attachment size. Um, just, this is to kind of help. There was a, there can be some issues sometimes pushing data, uh, especially pictures and large pictures. So you can actually change the size of your image if you want. All right, we'll go back to settings. Now here's where the high accuracy part comes into play for the receivers. You have this location tab. The first time you run this, it's the integrated receiver. In my case, it is the iPhone 6 that I'm running here. And I'm going to choose my provider and in the list here you will see I have oh, I already have my R2 and my R1 but if it's the first time you you worked with this you would click on the plus sign in the top right corner and then any receiver that you have in the in your Bluetooth list that's connected it would show up here and you would just follow the on-screen instructions in this case we're gonna select the R2 it automatically tries to go in and start up uh, GNSS status. I, I did it beforehand because I wanted to configure it. If you click on the I button, that's where you can come in here and change your antenna height if needed. I'm going to click on done. So we're connected to the R2. So we're telling collector we want to run the Trimble R2 with a two meter pull. Next thing is this correction profile. Now there's the default. Uh, so what you need to do is is you need to come in here and add one. This is where where accuracy or comparing apples to apples with high accuracy really comes into play. My corrections coming from LSU GolfNet are in terms of NAT 83 2011. So when you add these profiles in here, it says, okay, select the coordinate system used by your receiver's correction service. Just from uh, my reference playing with this, it'll take you about 10 minutes to find the proper one. I recommend you just type in GCS, NAD, and then you would get all of them. This is the quick way. In my case, it's 2011. Now it says, select the coordinate system used by your map. Well, I'm using WGS84, my map. So I would select WGS84. Now it says, specify an expected area for data collection. I'm going to hit the, the little circle with the tick marks in the top right corner. And it's going to zoom in. So let's just come down here. And I'm working out of the great city of New Orleans today. All right. And finally, I'm going to hit my little arrow over the tab to the right. It says add a profile for the datum transformation. I'm assuming Esri is using something very similar. They do the ArcGIS, the desktop, where the highest one in the list is the one they expect you to use, or the preferred one. In this case, the WGS84 to NAT83 2011 for USA CONUS and Alaska. I'm going to select that and then you would give it a name, Eric B. Test, because I already have this one in here. Save it. 
So you can have all these different profiles in here. You can already see that I have mine in here. But let's say I want to use SBAS. I would use a different correction source. Or let's say my VRS or my base station is spitting out coordinates in NAT83 Harn Epic. You could set those up. So we're going to select NAT83 2011 and I'm going to hit the back button. And then the next few things in the list here, you have your units of measure and how you want to sync the data and fun stuff like that. We're going to click on done. I'm going to open a map up. And we'll see the next new thing we have in here. I'm going to click the circle with the tick marks and you'll see it brings up the GPS. The bottom left corner, you'll see if we zoom in, you can see where I'm working right now. If I click on the arrow here with the one centimeter that's our estimated accuracy if I click on that it's going to give us our GNSS metadata our horizontal and vertical accuracies uh, what kind of fix we're receiving uh, correction status the age the satellites and then our profile all right and then if we go to add a feature here um, I'm going to click on the settings menu and in the past if we had an iPhone, I think that accuracy, the best we would see is like 5 meters or 3 meters. I can't remember the exact number. But now you can see we're able to utilize a required accuracy. We can bump this down. And we can hit save. And then there's my stuff. So I haven't gone through and set up any of the metadata attributes on the office side, but I can say that you know, here here we are. We're getting corrections. Um, what we're going to do here is I'm just going to back out. We're going to go back to maps just to show you. We're going to flip this correction profile back to the default, which is just regular WGS84. So I could expect to see uh, in my area here, I think I'm at like 2.3 feet, the difference between WGS84 and that 83211. I think that's kind of a rough estimate but um, I'm gonna go to done we'll go back into the map and when I click on this I should see my GPS shift a little bit I think it's kind of moved a little bit what I need to do is uh, go out and log a point a nail and set up on it and then we can see how it looks but you can already see that let's just shoot another point right here why not I'm going to actually cancel this one. Let's shoot a yellow one. Okay. So I have two points in here. Um, in, in the, if I went in and measured, it should be roughly a two-point shift. Let's see. Oh, it's in miles. Feet. Oh, five feet. That's interesting. Okay. Well, I'll have to do a little more testing on some real control right now. I'm just picking on the map. So, uh, but anyway, that's kind of what I've come up with so far on uh, Collector. Thank you guys. Bye.